Okay. Um, so we're going to do some documentation. Let me get rid of this. And fix this. Okay. So depending on if you're PC or Mac, um, there's different ways to do documentation. Most of you guys are PC, this one. Uh, but it's pretty much the same thing. Um, and there is, if you go to the MEA 300 page, under links, there's a documentation page. This is just YouTube tutorials on taking screenshots and video. Uh, so screenshots on PC, screenshots on Mac, screen recording, Mac, screen recording, Windows. And then if you want to get more sophisticated, you can use OBS, which is, you guys might know that, it's a broadcasting software for streaming and stuff. That's actually what I use to record the videos. Um, so if you want to do more crazy stuff, that's what you would start with, but you don't have to do that, obviously. Um, what I'm going to use, since I'm on a Windows right now, is the uh, Xbox Game Bar, because um, it actually has some really nice built-in documentation tools. If you're on a Mac, um, what you want to use is just the basic screenshot application, uh, which you can open just by going to the Spotlight and typing in screenshot. Um, and uh, yeah, I won't be able to go over it on the PC, but I would. You can watch the videos and check it out. And you might already know. How to do it. Um, so anyway, I want to do some documentation. So I want to go to my level, and part of documentation is showing the process. So I can take images of just the level, but then I can also take images from the game. And so the nice thing is that a lot of these tools are built in now. So if I want to take some images, I can hit Windows G. And I think this is default on most Windows now. You might need to install it if you don't have it. Um, there's other ways to do it on Windows as well, but I find this to be the easiest. This is the Windows uh, Game Bar, which is designed to capture video games. And there's a couple different options here. You can use the screenshot, which is the camera. You can record a video, which is this dot. And you can actually turn audio on or off. Um, and you can record system sounds. You can do all this stuff in here. And then if you click on see all my captures, this is some stuff from last semester. I should probably do it. But it shows you all the captures. And then you click on this little folder. It's going to open a new app, or it's going to open your finder. Uh, I'm just going to delete. And this is where the videos will be. And you can change that if you want to, but as long as you know where it is, you don't really need to. So when you do a capture with the Windows Game Bar, it's going to capture whatever window you had open when you hit the key command. So I'm going to make sure to have Godot open. I'm going to make this full screen. And I'm just going to show a couple of views of my level that I have so far. So I'm going to, you know, Line it up to look kind of nice. Zoom in a little bit, something like that. And once I get it where I want it, I'm going to hit Windows G. And I'll just take a screenshot. And so there's that first screenshot. Looks good enough. Click back here. Maybe I'll show it like a top-down view. You know, I don't have that much going on. But eventually, as your level expands, you're going to want to capture all the different parts of the level. So I'm going to get a little top-down view here. I can also use the gizmo to line it up nice and straight if I want to. OK, so you might want to take some top-down photos like this. So I'm going to hit Windows G, take another screenshot. But another thing I want to do, especially if I'm doing 3D design, is have a video so I can really show what it feels like to be inside of the game I'm making. So another thing I can do, I can actually start my game. And actually, let's change the window size. I didn't show this before either. If I go to scene uh, or project settings and go to window, I can change the size of the window. Um, and I can change it to full screen. Uh, I'm going to turn resizable off. And let's see if that works. So if I click play here. So now I'm in full screen. So that's nice for documentation because I don't have all this other stuff around. Um, and I can still hit escape and get out of here. So I'm going to run it, and then I'm going to hit uh, Windows G. And now I'm going to do a video. So I'm going to do this recording. So I'm going to hit record. And it's going to bring up this thing. I can hit stop when I'm done. 
And so now I can actually, you know, play the game to the extent that, you know, it's playable. Not a lot going on. But this is going to be a lot more engaging for documentation. And, you know, I can look around everything. So we can really see what the game feels like. So then I'll escape and stop the recording. Uh, and so now I've got some documentation. I've got some media that I can post along with my documentation. So here's my uh, video, just a little MP4. Got some weird cropping thing. I'm not really sure why it's not full. I'll have to debug that later. But we can still see the main content, so that's fine. And then I've got a couple images that I can post. So now I'm ready to make a post. I'm going to go to my browser. I'm already on the class page, uh, but you know, you'd have to go to the Open Lab page, make the post. You have to be logged in, and you have to have joined. I think everybody's joined. Here, let's see. One. Not everybody's joined. So you need to join um, the Open Lab page if you haven't yet. So to do that, we go to the main Open Lab. Um, and once you're logged in, you go to courses. It's probably up at the top somewhere. Or maybe not. I guess a lot of people are using this. Um, OK, so what you can do, it's, it's actually the same URL as the Open Lab page, but you just put group in the middle. So just type group in here. There's also a link to this in the Blackboard. But if you're on the groups page, you're going to see a join button here. Just click on join, and it'll add you as a member. Once you're added as a member, you'll see these this toolbar with these options. You just click on plus. And you're going to make a new post. And it says, so if you've never used WordPress before, I'll go over the interface. If you used it before, you already know this stuff. But basically, you have a menu over here. You can remove it or bring it back. It's always going to bother you to start with a category. Um, so we can add a category. Oh, these categories are actually from the class that I copied. So let's delete them. OK, and we can make a category for our weekly uh, dev blog. OK, so we'll make a new category, weekly dev blog, or just call it. Dev. And I'll say add new category. OK, um, I'll go back to post. Uh, and add a new post. OK, so now we can go to Categories, choose Weekly Devlog. And if you want to add other categories, you know, we could say this is our 3D game project. So I'll put 3D game project. And you can have multiple categories on one post. Um, then we need a title. So we'll say Weekly Devlog 1. And then we can just introduce what we're working on. So this week I started. Designing first level in my 3D game using the uh, 3D template. And you know, at this point, you may not have an idea of what you're creating, but if you have some sense of what you're working on, you could talk about it. You could say, like, you know, I want to make a platformer um, with uh, trees and Whatever you're working on, you can describe it a little bit. And then let's add our images first. So you want to add media, click on this little plus button. You can drag it directly on there as well. But if you want to use the interface, you cl click on the plus button, go to image. And again, I can drag the image on here, but I'm going to click upload. And so my uh, documentation, I think, is in documents. Oh, where is it? Um, 
in video. Videos captured. Okay. And I'm going to start with this one. Okay. And you can add a little caption. So side view of level one. Okay, I'll add another one. And you can add as many images as you want to. I'm doing a couple as a here's our top view. And then finally I'm gonna add the video. So I can add a video element, click upload. There's my video, click open. And I'll say video capture. One play. Okay. So I don't know why there's so much space in the video. I need to figure that out, but you can see the video works. And so we get a sense of how the level. And um, yeah. That's pretty much it. There's other stuff you can do, but that's the main stuff you want to do for your blog post. You can go to preview and take a look at how it's going to look on the blog. So this is what it's going to look like. Um, if you're happy with that, you can click publish. And it's going to create the post on the blog. So when you click on here, so now we're on the blog. And so there's a couple of nice features here. One is that it's going to show up in the main post feed. So when you guys publish something, it'll show up in the post feed with everybody else. It'll show up under your name as an author. So if I click on my name, you're going to see all of my posts. I only have one right now, but you're going to see all of the posts that I've made throughout the semester. You can also look at categories. So if I want to see everybody's 3D game projects, I can click on that. If I want to see everybody's weekly devlog, I can click on that. Um, if you are logged in and you're on your post, you'll see an edit button. You click edit, you can go in here and make changes. You can also go to the WordPress dashboard. So I see a lot of stuff because I created the blog. You will only see your own posts. Um, so you'll only see stuff that you worked on, but you can go into something that you wrote and edit it, add new categories or, you know, do whatever. Um, Let's go back. So then if I want to go back, I can go to the permalink here. Uh, one thing is if you make changes, always remember to click the update button because WordPress won't automatically save them. Um, and yeah, that's it. You are not going to see this add to portfolio button. That's something that I'll show you guys how to set up a little bit later in your, well, actually, I'll just show you guys how to set it up now. So one of the things that you may want to do is add this to your own WordPress uh, Open Lab portfolio. So if I go to the Open Lab and go to my profile, I'm going to right click to open. Everybody gets their own profile on the Open Lab once you create a, an account. And you can change your image, you can change your info. And it shows the courses. These are courses that I teach. Yours will show courses that you take, those communities that you belong to projects that you work on. So, you know, this is all the stuff that I'm involved in. Um, but you also get a portfolio. Uh, and so you can use this. For you guys, it is going to go away eventually because it's tied to your email. Um, but you can at least use it while you're a student to apply for internships, to send, you know, to apply for jobs, just to show people. And so the nice thing about the way this is set up is I can click Add to Portfolio. And I can add it as a post or a page. And it's going to copy all this content over to my portfolio. Maybe not right away. We'll see. It might take some time. But anyway, it'll eventually it'll show up here. So you can have it on your own page. Um, that's not a default setting. So to, if you want that to happen, you can go to my settings and uh, what is this? Oh, no. It's on the... Actually, this might be something I always forget where this is. Uh, 
It might just be on the blog itself. Let me see if that can. Okay, I don't remember where it is, but I know it's somewhere. If you guys see that, you can use it. If you don't see it, I'll figure it out later. Uh, but I know it's a setting somewhere. Maybe check my setting. I guess it's not here. So maybe it's on there. Anyway, don't really need to worry about that right now. So that's basically what we need to do to post on the open lab. Um, I think that's it. I'm going to stop the video. If you guys have any questions, it's